Hi everyone, I am Zen Khan. Welcome back to Robotics 101. In this video, we are going to talk about inverse kinematics, which is arguably one of the most interesting and by far the most used concept in the world of robotics. It is also called backward kinematics since it is the opposite of forward kinematics. Let me explain what this is with the help of this fancy robot that I have right here. So this is a 3R robot. It has got three revolute joints. Each joint has a motor attached to it. So each joint can rotate independently. And there is an object that this robot needs to pick. So the question is how much should the motors rotate in order to bring the gripper to grab the object. So this is the position that I want the gripper to be at. So inverse kinematics is just that you are given the required end of vector location and orientation, which is this one. And you have to find out what robot parameters are required in order to achieve that. So in this case, the robot parameters are the three angles, theta one, theta two, and theta three. Isn't this interesting? I bet it is. And the good thing is, it is quite easy as well. Let me show you with the help of a planar 3R robot. It is a three degree of freedom robot in which there are two rings of three units and two units respectively, and there is an end effector. Each joint of the ring has a motor attached to it, which can rotate. And there, the robot parameters are theta one, theta two, and theta three. I have made a small program to make it easy to understand. So I have the same robot in this program. And at first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the robot at zero configuration. Zero configuration is when all the robot parameters, which in this case are the three angles, theta one, theta two, and theta three are zero. And now I am going to increase theta one. So you can see that the robot revolves as theta one is increased. Keep in mind that all the thetas are positive in the anti-clockwise direction. Now I am going to revolve theta two and similarly theta three. Now let me introduce an object into the space. So this is the object that the robot needs to pick up. So the question is, in order to pick up this object, what should be the robot parameter? So how far should the motors rotate? That is what should be the value of theta one, theta two and theta three to make the end effector come to such a position that it can grab the object. And just by try and, try and error, I can see that in this case, it would be somewhere around 45 to 90 degrees for theta one, somewhere around two, 25 to 270 degrees for theta two and somewhere around 323, 30 degree for theta three. Now let us do this numerically in a more exact manner. Now let me draw the object here. So the object is three units to the right and it has a height of one unit. So now the question is, what is the required location and orientation of the end effector? So that it can pick the object. I know just by looking that the X coordinate must be three, the Y coordinate must be one and the phi, which is the orientation must be minus 90 degrees. If you have trouble understanding why this is minus 90 degrees, it is always a good idea to first draw the robot at the zero configuration as drawn here. Mark out all the moving X frames M1, M2 and M3 as well as the fixed frame. So compare this moving frame M3 with the location of the moving frame when the end effector is picking up the object. And you can see that it has treated 270 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction or 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. Since, since anti-clockwise is positive, clockwise is negative, so it is minus 90 degrees. One thing to note is that the orientation of the end effector is not theta three. Now, in order to do inverse kinematics, what we first do is we write out the forward kinematics. 
If you don't know how to write forward kinematics or you just want to refresh your concept, I would highly recommend to check the video uh, out. The link is in the description. So writing out the forward kinematics, it is comprised of three homogeneous transforms, H1, H2 and H3. The first homogeneous transform has zero displacement and a rotation matrix with the rotation angle theta one. The second homogeneous transform has the displacement three units in X, zero in Y and a rotation angle of theta two. And the third has a rotation angle of theta three with two and zero as the displacement. Now multiplying them out, I get this matrix right here. I know that this term theta one plus theta two plus theta three is the orientation of the end effector. And these two terms gives me the location of the end effector, which is the X and Y coordinates. So what I do now is I just compare the orientation and the location with the required orientation and the location. And I get these following three equations. And here I have three equations with three unknowns. So I know that they, these can be solved. Now you have a number of ways to solve this. You can either solve it in, in a software, which I would highly recommend, but it's always good to know how to solve it uh, using a pen and paper. So let me show you how. Feel free to skip if you want to. So fast forwarding very quickly. I'm just manipulating with the equations, squaring the equations up, adding the equations up, and I get to this point where I get 18 cosine of theta one plus six sine of theta one equals to 15. Now in order to solve this, there's a very nice technique that you can use what this technique is, is that you just divide all of the terms by the square root of the sum of the squares of the cosine and the sine terms. What I mean is that you divide them by the square root of 18 square plus 6 square. What we do is we then substitute in place of this the cosine of a new angle which is gamma and the sine of gamma. And we know from this right angle to angle that gamma is known and gamma can be found out. Found out. So solving further, I can see that I have a equation in theta, which has gamma and plus minus cosine inverse of something. And I can always figure out gamma as being just the 10 inverse of six over 18. So I get this equation. Notice that this equation has a plus minus cosine inverse term, which means that I'm going to get two values of theta. So that is what I get. So I get two values of theta one. I call them theta one A and theta one B. They represent two different solutions. That is something to keep in mind. The, the first solution has theta one as 56.2 degrees. The next has theta one as 19.3 degrees. Now fast forwarding again, I'm just manipulating these equations and I'm finding out theta two values. Again, I'm going to get two different values, theta two A and theta two B. Theta 2a corresponds to the, solution, the first solution, which is theta 1a, and theta 2b corresponds to theta 1b. Similarly, using the third equation, I get two values of theta 3, which are theta 3a and theta 3b. So at the end, I get two possible solutions. So I get two possible solutions. The first solution has theta 1 as 56.2 degrees, theta 2 as minus 104. 0.5 degrees and theta 3 is four, minus 41.7 degrees. And the, the second solution has theta 1b as minus 19.3 degrees, theta 2 as 104.5 degrees and theta 3 as minus 175.2 degrees. So these are the two positions of the robot that these two solutions represent. I can see that the first one is the solution that we want. And the second one, although it does satisfy all our conditions, but it isn't going to be possible physically in the real world. But of course we were solving mathematically. So sometimes we do get such solutions, but the good thing is we found the one solution that we were looking for. So if you made it to the end of the video and you found it useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, put a thumbs up on this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. I respond to every comment. And as always, see you in the next video.